excited because so many things about this book, you know, former military, my husband and I, and then we also got married in Vegas. <laughs> so I'll, I love that. Vegas, I'll, Vegas is just, yeah. Vegas is just fun. It's so fun. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to go live here and then we can chat later too. So, Hey, Amazon, welcome back. I'm so excited. Tiff Marcello is here. You guys, she is amazing. She is a veteran guest on the show. We've had her before and talked about all her other previous books last year. Um, she's got so many amazing books out there. This is her 10th book. It's Happy Pub Day for her. So welcome, Tiff. Welcome. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Erin. I mean, I love seeing you. Um, you're just an amazing person in the community. And on top of that, I mean, you're just a very, very cool person just to chat with. I mean, we chatted before we went live and, and um, I'm so excited for your success with your book coming out in a couple of days. So it's a Thank busy you. week for you too. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome. I'm so excited to have you back. Um, you guys talking about cool people. Tiff is a veteran. She's an army nurse. She has the coolest stories. Um, she's an army wife. She is an army sister. She has, you know, I'm telling you, if you have ever been an army wife, you know, or an army spouse, you know that it's like a sister brotherhood. Like you got to come together. <laughs> it takes a village sometimes. And, you know, she's just been an amazing person for the military community and not to mention writing such amazing books for us that take place in unique places with really character driven plots of, um, gosh, just romance and like family and like oh, thank you like family businesses and things like that so she's amazing so tell us a little bit about your newest book lucky streak which you guys yeah out right now it's linked below so you can grab you know whichever way you like to listen to it in audible ebook or um the physical is beautiful but i'll tell you this if you're a ku kindle unlimited participant you can listen to it and i that's my favorite when montlake puts out a book i'm like oh oh getting that right there on my um and i walk a lot with my dog so that's like my guilty pleasure is on audiobooks and this one is fantastic so tell us a little bit about your inspiration for this one yeah, so Lucky Streak is within the Heart Resort universe. So folks who have read It Takes Heart and Know You by Heart, this is set in the Outer Banks on a heart-shaped resort, resort called Heart Resort, and it's owned by the Puso family. The Puso family is a, a family of siblings, four siblings, and Lucky Streak is about Beatrice, who is the third born and only girl. And the story starts out with her in Vegas in bed um, with this gorgeous man who happens to be Jackson Hill. And um, they almost have a one night stand and they think that, wow, this could be something. But, you know, life tears them apart. It's And five years later, they find out that they're neighbors. But more than that, they find out that they are of two families that have been rivals with one another since the beginning. So if you can read this book alone, standalone, it is standalone, but if you were to read um, It Takes Heart, you know right off the bat that the, that the Puso family has issues with the Macaulays. Um, and we find out then that Jackson is um, has relation to the Macaulays. So it's both Beatrice and Jackson like really trying to find themselves because we find out that Beatrice has her own goals and dreams and finding love in between. So this book has a little bit of like a Romeo Juliet type thing, though I didn't want to lean into that too much because we already I already knew Beatrice from from the start. Um, and it just it's so funny because this is the, the third book in the universe, but I felt like it was so organic to get there because of books one and two. So um, I love this book so much and, and I hope people will love it too. What I love about it is the faded mates trope. I know. <laughs> okay. I write that myself because I think <laughs> that I want to read. So immediately I'm like, oh. and then this is my favorite line from your blurb is, Fate has its eye set its eye set on uniting two lonely hearts, no matter how much the universe tries to intervene. And I love that when yeah. it's faded mates, no matter what. Oh, I see your dog in the background. <laughs> I love that. Oh, <laughs> cozy, so cozy. Books and dogs. That's the world. Right, that's right. That's the good stuff. So I love that this was fate, and I love that 
you know, you had that wild night in Vegas where so close, right? And then I don't want to do a spoiler, yeah. but the whole number phone number thing yeah. where he's like, oh, it wasn't meant to be me. I would have been like a detective. I'd been I, like, I know. <laughs> like, I know. Like, yes. I'm like, oh. I, I, think I really leaned into the whole um, because in my life, there's always like a push and pull of logic yeah. and um, signs. I don't, it's just part of me growing up with my family because that's how my parents were. They were both, they were both really logical and um, very pragmatic, but also very much like superstitious and would answer things like, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be or things like that. So I really leaned into that. And yeah. the fact that things happen and you don't know why and suddenly, or, or you'll realize, you know, sometimes months years later that oh my gosh this mm-hmm. that is why that happened um or maybe that's just how i look at it because that's how i was raised but i really wanted to lean into that because beatrice is you know the she was so close to her mom and yeah. and you the parents had passed away um and that was pre um pre book 1 so uh, there's that connection beatrice is always looking for that connection or beatrice is looking for signs um because she misses her mother so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know. It'll pull at your heartstrings, guys. <laughs> That's the thing I love about your books is they're not rom-coms. They're contemporary women's fiction. And I love the real heartstring family dynamics, generational mm-hmm. saga kind of yeah. rivalry and, you know, different tropes in here that are just really amazing. You, like your characters are ones that you root for and you – you want to see them win. You want to see them succeed. And so the, this is just fantastic. So you thank finish you. this one and you're on to more. This is your 10th yes. book. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. And so, so amazing. So if you, how, how many years have you been publishing now? About five. So five years. Five years. years. 2000, 2017. Yeah. So it's wild. If you look back five years, what do you think you would have done differently? Oh my gosh. I don't think anything at all. Um, you know, I've been really, I've been really lucky, lucky, um, uh, blessed, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, that I was, I have been able to write the book I've wanted to write and sorry, delivery. (laughs) God's working now. Sorry. It's totally (laughs) fine. Probably it's pub day. So, you know, it's books. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we'll see how long it takes for these two to, to yeah. bark. You'll, put, you'll but, get um, Amazon deliveries too. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I've, I've been really lucky to have an agent that have that has supported me in what I wanted to write. Yeah. And so I feel like I was given the opportunities when I really wanted them. And my stories fit those opportunities. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel like I've had to compromise on that. So um, looking back, even though publishing has its ups and downs. Like I just don't have any regrets at this point because I was able to publish my YA, which yeah, I've always wanted to be published in YA. And then I have contemporary fiction and romance. So it's like to be able to touch all those things and then at the same time know that I have more stories that fit in those categories and maybe in other categories, it's, it's, it feels really good. So yeah. I've been really pleased. And then I have another book coming out in April, and that is a contemporary women's and m- much more serious. Um, it's kind of a um, a contemporary marmy of little women type nice. story where, um, yeah, so this yeah. Celine Lacotte is um, a 53-year-old woman and she lost her child two years ago, and she's at that point in, in her career where she's wondering, what is this all for? Mm-hmm. And she wonders, what if, you know, what if I didn't make that decision? Would I be in pain now? Would would I have a child? And would that child have died? And then she gets that wish. And so with that, um, yeah, so there's a lot of g- grief, um, mental health, and a hopeful, hopeful ever after, because with contempt, what I love about contemporary women's is that I can explore. Um, I can. Ex- it doesn't have to always tie up in a perfect bow. Yeah. Um, sometimes I, 
obviously I love writing and reading romance. So I love that bow. I love that perfect package too, but it was, this was a story that I really wanted to explore and this has a hopeful um, outcome, but uh you know, a hopeful and super realistic outcome, I guess is what it is. I love that. I yeah. love exploring mental health and tragedy and hard times and trauma because when I wrote my book last year, I was going through so much. My brother was killed by a drunk driver and mm, yeah. we were getting so ready sorry. to do his, thank you. We were getting ready to do his trial for yeah. the woman who killed him. And she was actually a nurse and mm. she was driving to work impaired. And mm. 7.58 in the morning and killed my brother. And so I used reading and writing as an escape from hard stuff. And yeah. when um, the amount of... Me- it, it was tricky to write this book because uh, I was worried how it would be received. But I've received a lot of messages from people who actually have dealt with similar traumatic situations that say, Oh my gosh, this book made me feel not so alone. Like right. as I read this and have been through this and... That's why I wrote it. And I I yeah. to read things like that because it makes me feel not so alone when you're dealing with own things, you know? For sure. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think it was a way for me to process some things too. I I think that um to put for me as a writer to put myself in another character, it's a safe way for me to process whatever I'm thinking of at that moment. Um and I don't necessarily become that character, but I can process that specific topic, you know, with this character, with their personality. Um, so it's, it's one of these things. And with romance, um, it, it gives me while I'm writing it, it does give me a ton of hope, like while I'm writing and while I'm reading it. Um, and so like the heart resort series has, has given that to me, you know, when I wrote, it takes heart, you know, two, three books ago, Mm -hmm. that was in the middle of the pandemic. Okay. Because I, I signed that contract in 2020. Um, so this series really has been born of this entire pandemic. And to be able to write this family really served a purpose in, you know, bringing me to the Outer Banks in like imagining this entire family and then giving them all happily ever afters has been so gratifying. I mean, we, we're still waiting for Gil. You know, Gil is the fourth. He is the second son. Um, I hope, I hope I'll cross my fingers and I hope that I get to write his story one day. But um, but there's just, you know, there's something about being able to write and, and give other people their happily ever after and then feel that for them, yes. you know? Yes. Uh, what are you currently working on? Oh my gosh. So I am not under contract for anything at this moment. So it has been. Oh, the highways are open. Stup- the roads are open. And this hasn't happened since. This hasn't happened in a long, long time. So I am, my, my wheels are spinning. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like I have a lot of freedom. So number one, I am enjoying this release week. This is the first time I've released a book where I am not under contract and and vigorously writing on another book. So I have just, I am enjoying this release week. Like I'm literally, you know, make I'm still making dinner. I'm not underdressed. Do you know what I mean? Because yes. it's for the first time I'm able to enjoy. And then um, I am like writing a ton of different, I have a lot of ideas. And so I have my notebook and I've been, like scribbling down ideas or, you know, points for each idea. And I'm trying to figure out which one is really going to win this race on which one I'm going to write, because I love all my ideas and um, I'm waiting for the one to really jump out and, co- you know, cobble the others and say, write me now. So cool. I'm very excited. I love yeah. that, that white space, that margin space where you can just really be free to like see what sticks. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sleeping in. Yeah. You know, um, I, yeah, <laughs> I've been sleeping in, I've been making food. I've, you know, like dinners every night, all these little things that, um, don't happen when I'm under deadline yeah. or under release date and deadline. I've just been, I've just been enjoying it. So it's been a wonderful release week. 
Well, I'm yeah. so happy for you. Good self care. Good. Good. Yes. And, and, and you know, I always think like we always dream about these moments. Like I remember thinking in 2017, man, I just want to write a book. If if the stars and the moon aligned and everything was perfect, I could write a book. Well, that's not really how yeah. it works. Like. Yeah. It's never going to be perfect. You just got to write the book. And so if I could have told myself five years ago, this is where you'll be five years from now. Um, just yeah. enjoy the ride and just be still and calm and enjoy everything. Yeah. And enjoy those moments where you can make dinner and you can sleep in. Because I remember, I think you're the 5 a.m. club, right? Yes. Yeah. So I actually showed up only once like last week for 5 a.m. Riders Club. Yeah. And it just so happened my dog woke me up. But um, it's definitely a phase that I am enjoying right now yeah. um, where I've I've been getting up like between 6 and 6.30 and um, and going straight to walk my dogs. I'm like, this is this is great. Um, and, you know, I assume that story is going to burgeon and I'm going to be writing a ton. So, yeah. Well, I'm so happy for you. Um, what Thank are you me. reading right now? Oh my gosh. So I've been reading a lot of contemporary fiction. So I have some next to me. Can I pull them out? Absolutely. Show yes. Show us what you got. Okay. I know. Okay. So first is Happyish. And um, Happyish is by Jeanette Escudero. She and I are super close friends. So she's also a romance writer. Um, her, her name is um, Sydney Halston. Um, she writes um, high heat romance, actually. Ooh, Although she's okay. coming out with another book. Um, but um, Happyish is uh, a year after um, a woman's divorce. She finds out some devastating uh, medical information about herself. And then she goes on a road trip to, um, to kind of process all of this information and how she's going to move forward um, in knowing that she is now sick. Right. So this is um, also by Lake Union, um, which is an Amazon imprint. Nice. So it's so good. And you know, what? it's not that long. Um, I think it's only 255 pages. But Jeanette has a way of just um, grabbing you from the first page, you know, and she made me cry like three separate times in this book. So and then that. I have a debut. Um, Ooh, in the shade of olive trees. <gasps> that cover yeah. is gorgeous. So this is by Kate. It's gorgeous, right? Yeah. Um, and this is by Kate Lack. And this is about a woman who gets left at the altar and decides that she she's going to take her honeymoon trip anyway. And she goes to Italy and she's kind of, you know, she's grieving. And she's rounded up by a woman who runs a retreat for widowed women so um so she goes over there so she is she's not widowed you know she's she was left at the altar but she that's where she begins her healing okay. so for a debut author this you know kate lack is her prose is really beautiful and her setting is really gonna sweep you away so um yeah so she that really i loved it and then with love from wish and company Ooh. and this is by minnie dark love that so Minnie dark is an australian author and um i think she just announced that she's going to have an audible original as well nice but um the the protagonist is a professional gift buyer and so people hire the protagonist to buy gifts for other people and sometimes for secret folks like you know mistresses and whoever else and one day she, the protagonist accidentally switches gifts and hence chaos ensues. And then she finds out, you know, she ends up, yeah, she ends up uh, becoming involved with a, the son of the person that she mixed up the gifts with. So it's, it's really funny and it's just Looks so good. good. So those are the, th yeah, those are the three that um, recently that I've read that I've loved. Love it. Um, I always like to ask, what are you watching right now? Oh, Downton Abbey. <gasps> I love so, Downton Abbey. Yeah. So I started again, you know, from like season one mm -hmm. to see what I've missed. Oh, and I have to say, you know, yeah, when Matthew passes away, I think that was season three. <gasps> it's 
it's it's I'm now in season five, right? So I've gotten past that, but it's still hard for me that Matthew's not there. Not there. Yeah. Um, I wonder. It makes me wonder, like, how many folks like jenisoned after um, after Matthew died. Yeah, you know, because it Arcee just seems so the sad. Yeah, they really did just uh, kill off one of the MVPs there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I am I am in season five and I'm hanging on. Um, but I do miss Matthew. I was telling my husband the other day and he just laughed at me because, you know, I'm talking about them like like they're people. They're, <laughs> they're people. I'm like, they should, you know, I miss Matthew. He's like, <laughs> he's never watched Downton. He's like this Matthew. I need to figure out who this Matthew is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So now that you're 10 books in, five years out, which is a pretty busy yeah. haul for the past five years. I mean, pat's on the back to you yeah. because that's a oh, busy publishing <laughs> career for five years in a pandemic for half of it. So kudos to you for writing like a champ through all of that consistently, all these amazing books. Now that you have five years under your belt, what advice would you have for an aspiring author? Oh, my gosh. Um, I would have to say that besides, you know, stopping to really kind of smell the roses, I also want to say that if, if the opportunity is there, you should take it, um, whatever that opportunity is. Um, I don't know if you've read the book by Shonda Rhimes, The Year of Yes. Yes, I have. I yeah. Love and yeah. And it was after that book that I looked at things as opportunities versus um, trouble or too much trouble or, um, and that really hard. kind of changed too hard. That's silly. Why would I, you know, that kind of stuff. Because it, in, I think that the journey is very humbling. Yeah. So as a aspiring, aspiring published author or um, a beginning writer, you might think, well, why me? Mm -hmm. But you should like scrub that out of your language. So after right after reading Year of Yes, I really sought to look at things as opportunities. And it has really, in my opinion, whether just my just my own opinion of how I looked at things, they were opportunities, in my opinion. And it has led me to where I am now. So um, I am a person that says yes for the most part. Um, that's not, a lot of folks don't as ascribe to that and that is okay. But when it comes to like my, my writing and the opportunities that are placed in front of me that I had no control over, if it's, I usually say yes, if I can, if I can do it. Um, and I have met a lot of amazing people. Um, and I've gotten to write a lot of awesome stories because of it. And, um, and I think that's it. Yeah, it's, I think point of view really does help in this journey because it's just so humbling yeah. because there's so many roadblocks um, along the way. So, um, you know, I would say be good to yourself and give yourself grace and say yes and enjoy the ride. Amazing. Well, where else can we find you and support you online? Yeah, so um, I have a brand new website up. So if everybody oh. can go to tiffmarcello.com, um, Author Bites redid my website and they are so awesome. Um, but I am going to real, I'm going to try and focus to use that as like my launching point because um, I, I feel like I'm stretched out in like all these social media mm -hmm. um, channels. Um, although Instagram is my favorite of all. Um, I'm good. I'm going to try and work on my website because now it's really a gorgeous thing and, um, and it's a shell that I can, um, I can yeah. build out on. So absolutely. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Look at, oh my gosh, look at all these awesome. Yeah. Herbs. Oh, from Mia Sosa. I love her. I love her so much. Oh, she's her amazing. Her books are so good. She's amazing. Her last two books. They're so good. I, I, I just kind of want to go reread them now because <laughs> they're so good. She's so good. Yeah. And she's so funny in person too. Like that under the surface humor that actually makes me cackle. Yeah. Um, but the oh, way like when Mia somebody speaks, slides like something by and you're like, what? 
Yeah, and I crack up, and she's yeah. Mia has this like great like like the way she acts. It's like it's not like slam, you know, but um bump or anything. It's just she says it with a straight face, yeah. and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But um, but yeah, her I loved her her last two books. I mean, they're just fantastic. Yes. Love her too. Well, everyone, grab Lucky Streak today. You can buy it on Audible. You can grab it on ebook. You can grab it on paperback. Either which way you read books and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. This was so fun. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. Erin, good luck. Amazon's in the next again. couple of days. I know. Okay. How many um, do thank we have? you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next one.